A first real video from inside Titan conquers the web. Millions of people are thrilled by this footage, which shows us the Earth-like moon Titan in a way never seen before. A spacecraft the size of a small car crashed over Titan, giving us images of a world that seems strangely familiar and yet alien. Do you think it's possible that humans will one day live on this distant world? We will now show you why this is possible. Enigmatic Moons Can you imagine what the least explored objects of the solar system are? That would be the moons. We know quite a lot about Earth's moon, and there are 206 other moons in the solar system, and some of them are the most mysterious objects. Some moons may even harbor life. Our Earth's moon is one of the celestial bodies that are considered quite well studied, but even our satellite keeps surprising us. Researchers were even more surprised when they were able to study very distant moons for the first time. The numerous moons of the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn showed some peculiarities. Titan in particular captivated the scientists, because this moon is more similar to Earth than any other object in this solar system. Could a moon of all things be the twin of our Earth? Earth and Titan both have dense atmospheres, with Titan's shell consisting mainly of nitrogen. They have liquid oceans, and although Titan is only about 50% the diameter of Earth, its atmospheric density is higher. Both celestial bodies exhibit weather phenomena and seasons. Despite certain differences in size and mass, Titan's Earth-like characteristics are intriguing. Titan is not quite half the size of Earth and one of the largest moons in the solar system. It is unique. That much is clear, and for a long time it was considered a promising candidate for the discovery of life in space. No wonder, then, that NASA sent a probe to this celestial body, which for the first time sent us images from an Earth-like and very distant world. Saturn's moon Titan has fascinated scientists and amateur astronomers alike ever since, and many people dream of a mission to Titan to unlock all its secrets. The Cassini-Huygens Mission in 1997, a twin probe set out to study Saturn and its moon Titan. Cassini-Huygens was underway for nearly 10 years until it entered the planet's orbit in 2004. Once there, the main Cassini probe was responsible for studying Saturn in depth. Thanks to Cassini, we now have stunning images of the gas giant, detailed photos of the numerous rings, incredible impressions of the massive storms that are larger or as large as on Earth, and completely new impressions of the numerous moons. The Cassini probe was an important milestone in the history of NASA missions. But before Cassini started its mission, there was another highlight that had never happened before in the history of space travel. Cassini had the lander Huygens on board. In cooperation with the European Space Agency and the Italian Space Agency, a lander was constructed to land on Titan, and it was named after the astronomer who once discovered the natural satellite. Christian Huygens was an important 17th century Dutch astronomer, mathematician, and physicist. In 1655, he discovered Saturn's moon Titan using a telescope of his own design. This was akin to a miracle and demonstrated the enormous progress of the technology Huygens had developed. Saturn, which was far away, had been very difficult to see before. Then, to discover one of the moons, tiny compared to Saturn, was a feat of late medieval astronomy. Huygens would probably be rubbing his eyes now if he had seen how, some 350 years later, a small man-made robot landed on the moon he had discovered in order to find out how Earth-like it really was. Titan is so far the only celestial body in the entire solar system that has been shown to have a climate, rainfall, and water cycles similar to those on Earth. However, Titan also has such a dense atmosphere that telescopes have never been able to look down to its surface. All knowledge came from measurements of light emissions and was based on calculations. Excitement was high when a probe was finally on its way to send images from this alien world for the first time. Huygens Descent on Titan Titan resembles a small planet orbiting a gas giant. If Titan were orbiting the Sun, it would be one of the large planets, because Saturn's moon is even several hundred kilometers larger than Mercury. Because its axis of rotation is tilted relative to the orbit of the planets, Titan experiences different angles of solar radiation over time, resulting in seasons similar to those on Earth. The Moon orbits Saturn in about 19 days and 22 hours, and that's the same time its rotation takes, 
causing the same title locking effect we have here with the Moon. In other words, Titan always points the same side towards Saturn simply because its rotation takes the same amount of time as its motion around the planet. Although it's more than 1 billion kilometers away from the Sun, the natural satellite can experience seasons. This is due to its completely different chemical composition, dense atmosphere of nitrogen and methane, and surface temperatures as low as minus 179 degrees. The existence of a dense atmosphere on the natural satellite results in weather effects such as haze rising and gathering into clouds, rain, lakes, and oceans. Planets and moons that do not have an atmosphere usually cannot hold liquids on their surface. They evaporate into space. Since Huygens, however, we know that these fluids on Titan are only partly water. Most of the oceans and lakes on Titan are filled with liquid methane. Does this now destroy all prospects of finding life there? We'll see. But before we show you that life is conceivable on Titan and that even humans could land there, let's take a closer look at Huygens' descent. First Images from an Alien World On January 14, 2005, Cassini released her friend Huygens high above Titan. The 2.5 by 3 meter probe began its risky descent to the moon. Absolute silence reigned in NASA's control center as Huygens set off on its nearly two-hour plunge through Titan's atmosphere. From an altitude of less than 150 kilometers, the camera system responsible for recording infrared and visible light was to be launched from Earth. Previously, only instruments were used to measure the exact composition and temperatures in Titan's upper atmosphere. The probe crashed at a speed of more than 400 kilometers per hour. A parachute was opened to allow for these images and a soft landing. It did a sensational job slowing the probe down and slowing it down perfectly. Huygens touched down on Titan's soil at a gentle 17 miles per hour. At 9.43 a.m. local time in Houston, Texas, Huygens became the first man-made object to land on a moon in the outer solar system. The gentle shocks activated other instrumentation. Huygens' technology had been programmed to be largely self-contained to ensure the probe's functionality, even if radio control from Earth was lost. In the first moments after landing, the spacecraft recorded data from the surface of a natural satellite that was not our own moon for the first time in the history of astronomy. We saw a world that has remained untouched for billions of years, and we are the first humans to see the surface of this distant world. To this day, the Huygens lander holds the record for the farthest landing by a space probe. The simple and low-resolution images show us a brownish, rocky world with mountains, valleys, and a uniform surface without plants or traces of living creatures. The sensors measured negative 179.3 degrees and an atmospheric pressure 1.44 times that of Earth's atmosphere. The sunlight reaching the surface is thousands of times fainter than the sunlight we receive here on Earth, yet it's bright enough on Titan to make these images possible. Compared to Earth, the light intensity on Titan would be equivalent to about 10 minutes after sunset. Huygens also carried a microphone and recorded the sound of Titan's air as she descended. An occasional increase in amplitude can be heard, an effect that has not yet been fully explained. In addition to the stunning images, the Huygens lander sent data about 90 minutes after landing. After that, Huygens' energy supply was depleted and the spacecraft ceased radio contact. After the mission, Cassini began its more than 15-year research journey around Titan. But that is another story. We're still looking at the future of Titan exploration now. No life? Or is there? Those who expected to find traces of life and vegetation on Titan were bitterly disappointed by the Huygens mission. But researchers are not giving up hope of finding life on Titan. The fact that Titan's climate consists predominantly of methane and ethanol does not have to be detrimental to life. Research teams from the US and France proved this when they bred microbes in laboratories that have a methane-based metabolism. Realistically, we have to admit that we have only seen a tiny fraction of Titan. Imagine someone dropping a probe over the Alps or the Sahara Desert on Earth and then saying, boring, nothing but mountains and sand. Of course, to explore Titan properly, the best thing would be to send a rover or even astronauts there. That may sound utopian now, but it could be a reality in a few decades. With a SpaceX Starship, currently the fastest and best spacecraft we humans have, 
it would take two to four years, depending on the constellation. Humans could survive several weeks on the very cold Titan in special thermal suits and in a research vehicle like the one soon to be tested on the moon. Imagine humans exploring this alien world for the first time in a rover. What lonely splendor would be revealed to them and what wonders scientists participating in the mission would find on Titan? Titan's gravity is significantly weaker than Earth's. With only about 14% of Earth's gravity, a 1,000 kilogram vehicle there would be 140 kilograms light. Humans would probably find themselves floating on the surface of the celestial body. Titan's gravitational pull is still somewhat weaker than that of Earth's moon. The Apollo astronauts who explored the moon could easily bounce around on the celestial body and vehicles also function reliably. Nevertheless, Titan would most likely not be suitable for a permanent residence. We still know too little about how such low gravity and the basically hostile environment without oxygen and vegetation affect the human organism in the long run. Press the subscribe button because there are many more highlights to come.